Hi, and welcome to another episode of All Things Considered. Uh, yesterday I put up some videos and I had gotten a comment from a viewer and I was asked, um, basically I was asked if I would do a video on um, my thoughts on how to fix um, the problems that are in Seattle. Uh, my ideas on how things should get fixed. <clears throat> the homelessness problem, the drug problem, and uh, the high cost of living, um, the lack of affordable housing. Um, I've done videos on that before, but uh, today I'm going to do another video on that and just kind of give you an idea of um, my take on it and, and the things that I would do to fix the homelessness problem, fix the drug problem, the high cost of living, and also uh, the lack of affordable housing. I mean, you think about it, the lack of affordable housing, you have people that are making $60,000 a year considered low income now, when the national average is 20000 or less is considered low income. Uh, now, because Seattle has such a high cost of living, which means they say, they say the economy is booming. Just because you walk into a store and pay for an item, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have the funds to be able to afford that. Stores think that because you're paying for it, that you can afford it. Housing, houses that are worth maybe a hundred and a half thousand dollars are being sold for a half a million to a million dollars in Seattle. The ones that are selling the items, all they care about is the dollar. They don't care about how it affects the community that's buying their products. I lived in Seattle back in the 90s. And for me, it was great. Now, I know I talk a lot about Seattle and I talk about the problems of Seattle and I don't deal with the place I live at now, which is true, I don't. And the reason I don't is because I see the problems that are happening in Seattle and that's where my heart is at. My heart is in Seattle, it's always been there when I was younger, I was I was kind of dumb and stupid, and I made some mistakes. I had some family issues, too, that popped up, and I had to take care of those. And before you know it, time has went by, and now Seattle is where it's at now. Yes, there was homeless problems when I lived in Seattle, but it was very manageable. Very, very manageable. Uh, the drug problem just really started to expand as I was moving out of Seattle. They were doing a drug uh, needle exchange program, which basically gave the okay for people to be doing drugs on the street. Just bring us your needles. Uh, we won't have you arrested. Um, it'll be confidential and safe. So basically, it's easier just to allow somebody to do something than to try to stop it. And um, they grew from there. And then when Seattle passed, um, or whenever the state of Washington, I guess it was the state of Washington or Seattle, when they passed that uh, pot program, which means that uh, you can go to Seattle and you can buy your weed and get as high as you want, Seattle became known as a drug town. It didn't used to be like that. Seattle used to be a town that was uh, kind of working class or a work in progress where everyone, no matter if you were on the lowest income or the highest income, there was something there for you. Seattle was built on four hills, four different hills. You have, you have Queen Anne, you have Capitol Hill, you have Beacon Hill, and then you have First Hill. 
Queen Anne was where all the rich lived at. They built their fancy houses. They sculpted a rich neighborhood. Going down the Beacon, or going down Queen, going down Queen Anne Hill, going down the hill, you have people that are very close. It's like Beverly Hills and in, in, uh, Hollywood, Beverly Hills and California. You got people that live in Beverly Hills and you got people that kind of live on the outskirts of Beverly Hills, but they can say, yeah, I'm like just a few blocks away from downtown Beverly Hills when actually you're not in Beverly Hills. You're outside of it, but just to be able to say you're a few blocks away, like uh, when people talk about Queen Anne, they're like, oh, where do you live at? Oh, I live down the hill from Queen Anne. And it's, they're like, oh, well, actually, you're still on Queen Anne Hill. You're just not living in the Queen Anne neighborhood. But now they've changed it, and they've moved Queen Anne from being up here down the hill toward the Space Needle. So um, now Queen Anne was always the rich. Now the artsy uh, neighborhood, the artsy college students, uh, community college students, um, and a lot of uh, gay uh, residents lived in Capitol Hill. It was very artsy, very nice. Uh, Broadway from like Pike going toward uh, uh, the park. Um, there was a whole lot of um, very nice and easygoing people that lived there. It was a really neat, cool community. It's not hip like it is now. I mean, back then it was livable. Now it's just hip and overpriced. I had an apartment in Queen Anne. I, Queen Anne. I had an apartment in Capitol Hill, and it was running me about four ninety-five a month. That was for a one bedroom, and it was regular rent. And I used to walk to get downtown because I worked at the Pike Place Market. Now. When I lived there, everything was really nice, and uh, you could basically walk everywhere, and you could get around. I stayed in a, mostly the downtown Seattle area. I filtered between I filtered between um, Pioneer Square and the Space Needle, and from downtown at the Pike Place Market up to Broadway. That's basically where I filtered. That was my whole area. Um, I used to walk down Broadway. Sometimes I would walk. There was an inter there was an International House of Pancakes that used to be down on Broadway, going toward. Um, I want to say it was walking toward First Hill. Yeah, between uh, Broadway and um, Pike, and uh, Broadway and First Hill. So. I would stop there and have breakfast, and sometimes I'd stop there and have lunch on the weekends. Um, and then I'd go back to the house and, and do my artwork and various things. Um, now, you got Queen Anne, Capitol Hill, and then you got Beacon Hill, which was mostly residential and VA, Veterans Administration, or veterans that lived there. And it was residential, it had its own neighborhood, which was kind of quaint. Um, and then you have First Hill, which was where a lot of the people that were dock workers started building their houses way back in the early 1900s, going up into the 50s. Um, and that's where uh, the county hospital um, is at in uh, First Hill. And so you got a lot of people that uh, live there that were uh, basically just a working class area of Seattle. Um, then about maybe 2000 the homelessness problem started to spike and um, rent started to go up just a little bit then Microsoft had started off in, in the early 90s about uh, 93 or 94 it started to take off uh, Bill Gates knew that if he was going to make a ton of money off of Seattle he had to help Seattle he had to give back to Seattle. Now, Bill Gates is not the greatest person in the world for giving back, but he does get a pass from me because unlike Amazon, which is like pulling teeth 
to help um, get anything done in Seattle. Uh, Microsoft and Bill Gates and his wife, they have given, and Paul Allen, um, I think it was Paul Allen, uh, the owner of the Seahawks, he, um, um, he was part owner of Microsoft. He uh, had given back quite a lot before he passed on. Um, now, on to the homelessness problem itself. I have talked to several places that have buildings that are considered, um, they're not really warehouse buildings, they're more like factories, like factory bu type buildings. Uh, they're single floor factory buildings, about like, you know, and they can be rehabbed fairly easily. And I've talked to several places that that have counselors, um, students that are uh, working in uh, social services, uh, social issues, um, therapy, counseling, um, to work in social services. Um, and I had asked if it's possible that the students could possibly volunteer their services for credits. Uh, just like in high school, uh, when I was growing up, if you worked at the local grocery store for uh, about four hours a day, you got credits um, towards your classes, which meant that you were working, uh, but you were earning credits, which in a way that was giving you life skills. Uh, and it was teaching you uh, the value of hard work. And uh, so uh, what we would do, this is my proposal, is to, and, and it's not going to, everybody's not going to like this idea, and a lot of people are going to bitch and moan and complain about it. But instead of just sticking your toe in the water to see how cold it is, sometimes you have to just jump right in. You have to jump in and, and hope for the best. And, and I want to jump right in. You would take all the people that are in the tent cities and you would move them into these um, factory-style buildings. Now, the factory buildings would be donated to the city of Seattle. And the factory buildings would be refitted and they would have cots, and sections, you'd have uh, sections for families that were homeless. You would have sections for single males, and you'd have sections for single females. Um, if you own a dog, uh, you could have the dog or whatever your pet is. And don't get me started on that because I think that's a horrible idea, having pets if you're homeless. Because it's not fair to the dog. It's not fair to the cat or whatever pet you may have. Because you're homeless, you cannot take care of yourself, but you expect to have a dog suffer in that with you? That don't make no sense to me. I get it, you're lonely, you like to have a pet as a companion, I totally understand. But you can't, you can't do it. It's just not fair to the dog. It's not fair to the pet that you have. Uh, and um, So, we would get all the homeless off the streets as best as we can, get it down to a manageable level. We would put them into these workable shelters. And I would, I would call it a workable shelter because you'd have six months, one, to either uh, get on the Drug and Alcohol Rehabilitation Treatment Center or um, if you are an alcoholic or a drug addict, you'd have to get into a rehabilitation center. Um, if you uh, are homeless uh, because you lost your apartment, You'd have to actively be seeking an apartment or seeking some kind of living arrangements um, outside of uh, living homeless. Um, if you show progress within that six months, you would get an extension. Um, if you lost your job, uh, you would uh, have to apply for another job uh, and show proof that you're applying. You can't just be saying that you're applying. You have to show proof of this. Now, it's a work in progress, but I've been thinking of this over and working it out in my head over the last uh, five to ten years that I've known about this problem. Uh, I've been trying to figure out exactly how to fix it. Now, another thing, you have to get a city council into the city council that is willing to do these things, that are willing to uh, take care of the problem. Now, 
they've got the homeless shelters. The homeless shelters are there because the homeless shelter uh, is making money off of the homeless. And don't get me started about the homeless shelters that don't cater to people that work at night. If you work at night, you're fucked. I hate to use that term, but that's the way it is. If you're working nights, you are screwed. There's no day shelters. Uh, you cannot go anywhere and sleep during the day if you work at night. So you better have a day job so you can sleep at night. They get you out early, early, early in the morning before all the workers that come into downtown Seattle are coming into work. They get you out late in the evening. They get you in late in the evening after all the workers have went home. Uh, as far as the drugs go, I would allow the police to round up everyone that are drug addicts and I would have them placed into uh, I'd have them placed into a drug rehab an on grounds drug rehab um, and you can't leave the grounds if you do you'll go straight to jail I know that sounds cruel and that sounds heartless but sometimes you got to put your foot down for the sake of everybody involved I just don't do this because I hate the homeless I don't hate the homeless I was homeless for a very long time, so I understand these problems. I do. Now, I was fortunate enough not to be in drugs and alcohol. I was fortunate enough to never try them. Um, alcohol, I have tried. I don't like the flavor of anything I've tried. Therefore, I gave up on it. Uh, but if you are uh, d connected to drugs and alcohol, the police should be allowed to round you up and take you to a drug rehab facility that would be at least 90 days to to uh, 90 days to uh, dry you out it takes at least that long for you to even get started to dry out now there's going to be some people that just like being homeless and there's going to be some people that just like being drug addicts and alcoholics they like it i don't understand why they like it they just do and for that i have a fix also I've contacted Greyhound and, and I've asked them if they would give me their thoughts on a possible one-way trip. The city of Seattle would take and work out a deal with Greyhound to where if you don't want to be in a shelter, if you don't want to be in a drug and alcohol rehabilitation center, if you want to live homeless and you like living homeless, you can live homeless. You just can't do it in the city of Seattle. You get a one-way ticket to anywhere you want to go outside of Seattle. Outside of the state of Washington, for that matter. If uh, you're going to be homeless and you want to stay homeless and you like living that way, you can do it in another city. So you pick a city, Greyhound gives you a ticket, Seattle pays for it and it goes to wherever you want to go that's my thoughts on it i would do a little bit more but i have only about 20 minutes of video time because my camera doesn't let me do longer than that uh anyway uh give me your thoughts on the matter put a comment uh down below uh like and subscribe to the video if you like what i'm doing if you have ideas on this particular video on how I can do things better, if this has sparked interest in your uh, ideas, put them in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Put them in the comments down, down below. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, I will respond to every, every comment that comes in, whether it's stupid or whether it's not stupid. In my opinion, there's no stupid questions. There is only questions that seek answers i don't believe that they're stupid now a person that puts a question down below after they reread the question they may believe that it sounds stupid but it may not be it may be smarter than you think so anyway like and subscribe leave a comment below um, give me your thoughts on what i've just talked about let me know what you think should be done about the homeless problem let me know your ideas and thoughts on it. This is an us, a you and I broadcast. So this has been All Things Considered, coming to you in the morning.
Uh, normally don't do it this early, but have a good day, Seattle, and all points beyond.